The Rise of the Gunpowder Empires Since the beginning of time, we have seen empires been born, and they all had a mutual impact on its population in the belief that they would last forever. All the biggest empires had things in common, a strong leadership, a huge trade network, and maybe the most important for any empire, a huge army. It is not often that we notice three empires coexisting and placed next door to each other. This happened in 16th to the 18th century. They all had some conflicts with each other from time to time. The arms and armor was quite similar, but with variation in style. Ottoman Empire. Based in Anatolia modern-day Turkey, it expanded into southeastern Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. It was a significant power in Europe and the Mediterranean, and at its peak, it controlled vast territories. The Ottomans utilized gunpowder technology in their military, including cannons and firearms, contributing to their military success and territorial expansion. Safavid Empire. Centered in Persia, modern-day Iran, the Safavids were known for their use of gunpowder technology in warfare. They clashed with the Ottomans and the Mughals, seeking control over trade routes and territory. They fostered significant cultural and artistic achievements, particularly in the realm of Persian art and architecture. Mughal Empire Based in the Indian subcontinent, the Mughals were renowned for their military might, administrative prowess, and the significant cultural and architectural contributions they made. They extensively used gunpowder technology, including cannons and muskets, in their military campaigns and battles. The Gunpowder Empires, or Islamic Gunpowder Empires, is a collective term coined by Marshall G.S. Hodgson and William H. McNeil at the University of Chicago, referring to three early modern Muslim empires, the Ottoman Empire, Safavid Empire, and the Mughal Empire, in the period they flourished from mid 16th to the early 18th century. Here is a look at the development of the three empires, the Ottoman Empire. The first of the three empires to acquire gunpowder weapons was the Ottoman Empire. By the 14th century, the Ottomans had adopted gunpowder artillery. The adoption of the gunpowder weapons by the Ottomans was so rapid that they preceded both their European and Middle Eastern adversaries in establishing centralized and permanent troops specialized in the manufacturing and handling of firearms. But it was their use of artillery that shocked their adversaries and impelled the other two Islamic empires to accelerate their weapons programs, the Safavid Empire. When we take a look at the Persian, Safavid Empire, the Chaldean defeat brought an end to Ismail's territorial expansion program, the Shah nonetheless took immediate steps to protect against the real threat from the Ottoman Sultanate by arming his troops with gunpowder weapons. Within two years of Chaldean, Ismail had a core of musketeers numbering 8,000 and by 1521, possibly 20,000. After Abbas the Great reformed the army around 1598, the Safavid forces had an artillery corps of 500 cannons as well as 12,000 musketeers. The The Mughal Empire The reigns of Akbar the Great, Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb have been described as a major height of Indian history. By the time of Aurangzeb, the Mughal army was predominantly composed of Indian Muslims with tribal elements like the Sadat e Bara forming the vanguard of the Mughal cavalry. The Mughal Empire became a powerful geopolitical entity with, at times, 24.2% of the world population. The Mughals inherited elements of Persian culture and art, as did the Ottomans and Safavids. Indian Muslims maintained the dominance of artillery in India, and even after the fall of the Mughal Empire, various non-Muslim Indian kingdoms continued to recruit Hindustani Muslims as artillery officers in their armies. In the period, they flourished from mid 16th Algeth to the early 18th century. These three empires were among the most stable empires of the early modern period, leading to commercial expansion and patronage of culture, while their political and legal institutions were consolidated with an increasing degree of centralization. Here is some of the reasons why they couldn't last. 
internal struggles and weaknesses. All three empires faced internal strife, including succession disputes, court intrigues, and administrative corruption. Weak leadership and inefficient governance led to economic difficulties and societal unrest. Economic challenge. Economic pressures such as inflation, declining trade routes, and fiscal mismanagement affected these empires. They struggled to adapt to changing global trade patterns leading to financial instability, military decline, and external threats. As the technological landscape changed, these empires faced challenges in modernizing their military. They encountered external pressures from emerging European powers like Britain, France, and later Russia that had advanced military technologies and colonial ambitions. Social and cultural changes. Internal societal changes and cultural shifts also played a role. In some cases, rigid social structures and religious intolerance led to unrest and rebellions, weakening the empires from within. Regional instability. Geopolitical shifts and conflicts within their regions, including ongoing wars between these empires, drained their resources and weakened their hold on territories. Loss of trade and economic dominance. With the discovery of sea routes to Asia by European powers, these empires lost their monopoly over lucrative trade routes impacting their economies significantly. Resistance and nationalism. In various regions within these empires, movements for independence and nationalism grew, challenging centralized imperial control. The combination of these factors contributed to the gradual decline and eventual collapse of these once mighty gunpowder empires. Their downfall spanned a considerable period and resulted from a complex interplay of internal weaknesses, external pressures and changing global dynamics. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.